Uh, sorry, Max. I got bad news and worse news. A witness identifies you as the one who introduced Alan Fisher's face to the sidewalk. And two cops picked you out as the one who'd been fighting with him. Now, I know that math's probably not your strong suit, but even you can see how this adds up against you. Only question is, which story is the judge going to hear, our version or yours? Now, our version is that you attacked some poor defenseless kid who was a little touched in the head. Shut up! Just, just shut up! Let me think. You don't get it. You don't get it. You, you just don't get it. Why don't you explain it to us, Max? Tell us why you killed this kid. I can't. I can't explain it to you. Why? Because you don't know what it's like out there. All right? <laughs> you don't get it. You, you think that you do, but you don't. What I don't get is why you killed some poor guy who's just as down on his luck as you are. He wasn't like me! He was a selfish bastard! He wouldn't share! He... wouldn't... share. All I wanted was a piece. Just one little piece, and I asked him nice. Piece of what, Max? An orange. One little crappy orange. Ms. Gardner, where's your client? On his way, Your Honor. Jack. Sidebar, Your Honor. What is this? The defendant is dressed like... A homeless person, imagine that. His appearance violates basic standards of courtroom decorum. Which aren't codified anywhere in the CPL. The defendant can dress for court any way that he wants. You mean how his attorney wants. This is a transparent ploy to get the jury to see him as homeless first and as a human being second. Actually, it's about letting the jury see him as he truly is. Either way, I'm not inclined to order a wardrobe change. Now step back and let's get on with this. You say the defendant was banging the victim's head against the sidewalk. That's right. Why didn't you arrest him? Wasn't clear who started it. We just sent the parties on their way. But I suppose in hindsight, maybe we should have picked the defendant up. What about medical attention? Why didn't you take Mr. Fisher to the emergency room? I asked him if he wanted to go. He said hospitals are where they brainwash you. And besides, he looked OK. Is that your usual practice? No rests, no trip to the hospital, so long as everyone looks OK? I don't have a usual practice. It's case by case. I use my judgment. Then let's chat about your judgment. The past year, you've handled uh, domestic disturbances, bar fights, traffic disputes. And in many cases, you've made arrests and or requested medical attention for the parties involved. If counsel could ask a question. My question. What made those cases different from this one? I'll give you a hint. The parties weren't homeless. I don't treat them any different. Really? Because it seems the only time you do arrest a homeless man or woman is for vagrancy, public intoxication, or when they bother a citizen. But as long as they're just beating up on one another. I didn't think an arrest was warranted in this case. It didn't matter if they were homeless or not. Homeless. Is that what you call them? What else should I? Call them. It's just when you were speaking to detectives Briscoe and Green, you used other terms. That was just, we use a lot of slang on the street. It doesn't mean anything. Then you won't mind telling us what those slang terms are. One of them was skells. What was the other? Lice heads. And to think you're a duly sworn representative of the law. Why is this mess still on your docket? Because Gardner thinks she can get him off and wants to make a statement doing so. And you don't think she has a point? That the homeless are animals and don't have to follow the same rules we do. Well, they don't live the same lives we live. We've turned our backs on them. I think that's overstating things a touch. I mean, there are shelters and soup kitchens. And all these so-called solutions just hide the problem instead of solving it. Nobody wants a shelter in their neighborhood. When's the last time you picked up a ladle at a soup kitchen? 
Every Thanksgiving, as a matter of fact. One day a year. You and all the other limousine liberals so you can look at yourself in the mirror. I mean, the sad fact is a lot of these people aren't going to get any better, no matter how much time and money we throw at the problem. You might as well try sweeping sand off the beach. Careful, Arthur. You'll make Gardner's case for her. I used to work construction, high steel. I got hurt on the job, and I blew through all my savings. And by the time I was back on my feet again, I was broke, behind on the mortgage. And eventually, I lost my house, my family. Then where did you live? For a little while, in my car. But then I sold it to eat. Then I started living in doorways. ATM vestibules were the best. And then the mayor started cracking down. So where did you go? For a few months, I lived in this empty subway tunnel. There were a lot of other homeless there, and rats. If you didn't wear gloves, they would nibble on your fingers while you slept. Sounds awful. You got all these people living in their own filth. You, you go in there, the stench would knock you back like three feet. And you couldn't go to a shelter? They're not safe. A lot of people, crazies and junkies, looking to steal your stuff or do worse. Did that happen to you, people steal your things? Yeah, I've been mugged. I lost count how many times. One time, these, these two guys rolled me from my shoes and gave me smileys all over my body. The, that's when they hit you with a chain and a padlock, and the, the lock leaves a bruise like a, a smiley face. I want to turn your attention to the night of your altercation with Mr. Fisher. He was crazy. I just asked for a piece of his orange, and he just started screaming at me. And I told him to back off, and he, and he pushed me, and, and he kept putting his hands on me. He was a lunatic. So why didn't you just walk away? I couldn't. Word got out that I'd backed off. I would be fair game. Fair game for who? Anybody. That's how it works. If you're vulnerable, if you're weak, you're a target. And I wasn't going to be a target ever again. So, you admit assaulting another man because he refused to share his orange? It's not that simple. The law of the jungle. That's right. And your lawyer suggested that you live like an animal in that jungle. Yeah, well, maybe she's right. And what are we doing here? We don't put animals on trial, Mr. Edgars. We put them down. Fine. Put me down. You'll be doing me a favor. Tired of living in the street, are you? You think I chose this for my life? I think you have more choices than Alan Fisher did, don't you? He was held hostage to his own delusions. But you could control yourself. You could have looked for a job. I had a job, I told you. And a house? Yeah. And a car? That's right. Friends, family, possessions. And I lost them! I lost it all! You don't know what that feels like to be a failure, to go to bed on a piece of wet cardboard every friggin' night wondering, how did this happen to me? I didn't want this. I didn't choose this life. This is something that happened to me, and it's like this thing in my chest that's killing me. It gets me right here. Sounds. human to me, Mr. Edgerson. 